G'day, folks. Welcome to the show. Strange to see the old fella in a tackle shop. A little bit like a kid in a lolly shop, eh? Welcome to the second part of our series on Cairns in northern Queensland. Now, behind me is the reason a lot of us go to Cairns, and it's called the Big Black Marlin. But there's another side to the magical waters of the Great Barrier Reef. And tonight, charter boat skipper Brian Felton and I check out the local depths for some interesting looking fish. And Steve Starling goes in search of a fish called the jungle perch, which is native to the northern Australian area. And with local guide Peter Haynes on the Russell River, Steve finds out what a fine little scrapper they are. Sit back and relax, folks. I hope you enjoy the show. Kanahoe skipper Brian Felton has many years' experience here on the Great Barrier Reef. He's equally comfortable at the controls of his game boat or hauling on a heavy hand line to catch a delicious reef fish for tonight's dinner. Oh, blue spot cod. Blue spot cod. What a beauty. Not all that common. What a beautiful table fish. Blue spot cod. That's him. Yeah, what a lovely fish. Hey, look at this. Look at this. I've got your blue spot cod. Oh, come on now. Yeah, he's got your hook in his face. <laughs> <laughs> you always say that. <laughs> he's got so our deck he snuds up the front. Is, he's actually taken... Mate, that's a tongue and a mouth bigger than Rex Hunt. What is that? That's just his flotation blue. <laughs> Thank God for that. You're not going to have a look at that. This is Snudge's hook. You can have this back, Snudge. It's my fish. <laughs> Mine's down there. Pretty fish. Very pretty fish. People might say, Brian, this is like Rex Hunt's office. There's no pressure, but I'm sure there's pressures on game boat skippers up here, is there? Yeah, I suppose you're right. It's like any job, I think, that you take seriously. I think the pressures are the ones that you, you might impose upon yourself trying to deliver fish every day. But uh, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I guess also you're yeah, keeping, the, keeping the boat running for the length of time we're at sea. Uh, you know, we might be out here for the best part of three months without going back to port at times. And uh, you've got to keep the whole outfit going, keep everyone happy and keep producing the goods and I mean I don't get anglers ever putting pressure on me but I think it's just pressure they put on yourself trying to deliver the goods every day. That's better. Oh. I don't think there's a bit of coral here Brian, I think we've got something that's swimming here. You got something there Rex? Yeah. It's a bit of an overkill, this little trout outfit on the reef. Do you think they laughed at me back at the boat? I wonder what they were <laughs> laughing at. I knew I didn't have any uh, any chance of impressing anyone with this little Shimano outfit here, but a little charter special. Used in charter boats down south, but they might be using the bigger kill up here. Well, let's see what you got. Oh, yes. He doesn't like it, actually. 20 pound lines putting a bit of pressure on him. Ah, here we go. Oh, what do you think that is? That there, Rex gives the double gaff. Gee, that's a nice looking it's fish. If I was down in Port Phillip Bay, I'd say that's a snapper, but that, that looks to me like a bit of a red emperor, is it? Or it is. something like that? It's a red emperor. It's a red emperor. Now, tell us a bit about the red emperor. What a beautiful looking fish. One of our premium demersal fish here. Top table fish. Is it really? Absolutely. So when you say premium commercial fish, when you were a commercial fisherman, you would think that this was a pretty good start to the day if uh, you were targeting fish to sell at the market. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a good size. So, so they're generally a deep water fish? Yes, they're uh, oh, 20 to 30 fathom sort of Are thing. Are they really? Yeah. Well, yeah, back off the reef edge. You won't find them up in the shallows too much. You will, and, you will occasionally. Yeah. But, uh, and a, a dead set bread and butter fish of the Great Barrier Reef. Pretty much, pretty much. I mean, anyone that came up here and catch a fish, if they caught something like that, they'd be pretty happy. <laughs> uh, 
Want a gas nut? Big barrel. Want a, there you go. Beautiful fish that. Very good. This big flowery cod isn't needed for the table, but before it's released, Brian and Snuds take the time to make a small incision through the abdominal cavity. This releases the gases in the fish's swim bladder, which expanded as it was hauled in. Now the cod can return easily to the seabed rather than floundering about on the surface. He's all right, he swam away, didn't he? Yeah, right in there. Oh, good. Yeah, be... No good to the air, eh? You know, it's a great scene up here on the reef. It's uh, a lot of people from all different walks of life assemble up here at this time of the year. Young Matty, our deckhand number two, is ready with the gaff. He's from the United States and he works his way right around the world on game fishing boats, helping out clients. And it's a great life for a young man. And any young people out there who are budding fisher folk and want to be involved in the industry, just get down the pier and show yourself around and say you want a job. And it's a great lifestyle. But the thing that really gets home to me is that fishing to me is a great family sport, and particularly this bottom bouncing, as we call it, you never know what you're going to get. Now, this fish here, it's a lovely medium size red emperor. And uh, very, very nice indeed. We're having a very, very hot bite here. And they're one of the prettiest fish in the ocean. There is no doubt about it, and I'm told, one of the best on the dinner plate. Good one, mate. Oh, he's pulling a bit, mate. Well, this is one of those great... Ah, he's habits. probably a trevally, mate. Yeah, probably a trevally. Shark or something. Blue spot cod. Oh, another one. You've done well, Errol. Lunch. Oh, oh, look at that. Beautiful. Nice in the pot, mate. Oh. Got him? Yeah. Look at that. Oh, he can be a better. <laughs> I've got colour here now, Matty. This little outfit, 10 kilo outfit, is really getting a good hard workout from this fish. He's got a bit of shine about him. He's got some. Yeah, I reckon you're right, Matty. I reckon he's got that bit of a kick about him, you know, that and the anti clockwise sort of circling, woof woof bird sort of a. Let me get out of here. Oh, what a nice looking fish. What a nice looking fish. Here he goes. Oh, yeah. No doubt about that. Okay, mate, what I might do is just let you get him in there. Look at that. Now, that is a magnificent trevally. Now, a grunt, 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 grunt. Yeah. And isn't that fantastic? Look at that there. Look at that. Now, that is a oh. down south number 30 snapper hook, if you don't mind, folks. Now, just have a look at that. <laughs> just have a look at that. That's the sort of hook you can catch a fish like that on. <laughs> I'm never going to tire of this, folks. I tell you what, we've got a seafood banquet to end all banquets tonight back at the mothership. And as usual, the ethics of Rex Hunt and all anglers around Australia, when you've got enough, you put them back. See you next year, baby. Nice and sharp. When most people think of the Cairns region, they think of offshore fishing out on the beautiful Great Barrier Reef, but there's a lot more to Cairns than the blue water fishing. There are some fantastic rivers and estuaries around the town, and this is the Russell River, about 50 kilometres south of Cairns, and I'm here today with one of the top local guides, Peter Haynes. Peter, what are we likely to catch up in the freshwater reaches of this river? Uh, sooty grunter, jungle perch, uh, mangrove jacks, uh, the odd barra, 
a few mud cod. Oh, there's all sorts of things up there. Tarpon, all sorts of good things. Well, what are we doing sitting here? Let's get going. Let's do it. OK. Yes. yes. Little, I don't know what it is. Might be a little barra. I think you <laughs> might be right. <laughs> oh, look at that, little baby. Yeah. Last year's, eh? Oh, oh isn't he a little beauty? Wow. They're a pretty fish, whatever size, aren't they? Yeah, great stuff. That's really good to see. Just goes to show what a healthy system this Russell River is. Look at that beautiful little barramundi. How old would he be? He'd have to be. Oh, just on a year, I'd say. Yeah, if that, right. If that. So uh, spawned uh, last year during the, the wet yes, season. Definitely, yeah. Oh, that's that's a great sign. A pretty little fish. And there's loads of bait in there in those drains. You can see why he's hanging around there. There's little bait fish and shrimps. Just pop these barbless hooks out. That's the nice thing about them. They come out easily. Well, that's not. That'd have to be one of the uh, smallest power I've ever caught, actually. But it's great to see. There we go. What a little beauty. Great looking fish at any size. <sighs> oh. Yes! Oh! It's a jungle perch. It's it a good one too. too. Oh, look at the size of it. Oh, it's going down into that snag. No, I got it out. Oh. oh boy, I've caught little jungle perch before in in rainforest, very small rainforest streams. But this is the biggest jungle perch I've ever seen. These are a fantastic fish. Nowhere near as many of them. Oh, look, there's another one with him. Ah, yeah. oh, his mates with him. <laughs> he threw water all over me. What a beautiful fish. He's only just hooked. These are quite an endangered fish now. They're not, uh, not available through their extensive range that they used to be up the east coast of Queensland. They're only found in small pockets of water now. They need pristine conditions to survive and they're one of our most magnificent native fish. As you'll see when I get this bloke up, they're, they're silvery and there's a spot on every scale. They're also called flag tails because they have black markings on their tail. He's taking line again. He was sitting on that snag there. He came out and nailed it once when I cast it, hit it on the surface, and I put it back in there again, and he ate it. Now, hopefully, I'll be able to get a hand under him. No. We're not supposed to jump, but he hasn't read the books. Oh, what a fantastic fish. I've always wanted to catch a big jungle perch, and now I've finally done it. That fish would be... Uh, over a kilo, wouldn't he? Oh, at least, 1.5, yeah. maybe. He's a very thick fish. But what a beautiful fish. Look at the little dark markings on each scale. And this is why they also call him a flag tail, because of these dark tips here on the tail. And then right on the very tip goes light again. An absolutely beautiful fish. Big dorsal fin there with quite stout spines in it. He's in the same family of fish that includes the bass and the golden perch and all our other popular native fish from down south. And just like a bass, he's got some very sharp spikes here on his gill plate, so I've got to be a little bit careful of those. If you can see that there. Now, there's only one point of the hook in there, and because it's barbless, oh yeah, that came out really easily. He was only just hooked. I was pretty lucky to catch him. I'll tell you what, these days you're pretty lucky to catch a jungle perch of any size. And to get one like that, well, <laughs> that's a fish of a lifetime. It really is. What a beautiful fish. I want to get him back in the water while he's nice and fit. Oh, mate. <laughs> oh, that is just the epitome of these Queensland rainforests to see a beautiful fish like that that once used to be quite plentiful but unfortunately not so much anymore because we've changed the environment so much but I tell you what, that bloke probably a big female actually and she'll get to spawn a few more times and hopefully the junglies will start to come back in these areas So Peter, how many days a year would you actually be out on the water guiding? Oh, around 200, Steve. 200 days, that's a yep. lot, isn't it? It is. But I mean, <laughs> I suppose you don't actually get to fish a lot yourself. 
No, well, I, I never fish while I've got customers on board at all. Uh, Oh, this is a bit of a treat for you. Bit of a busman's holiday right here. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> yeah. Well, where do you, you know, where do your clients come from? Are they Australians or? Well, no. All, all over the world. Japanese, French, Dutch, Asian. All over the world. Yeah. Right. You do get quite a lot of Australians as well, though. Yes, we do. So, for someone say coming up from Melbourne or Sydney, it could be pretty hard from to find fish up here, couldn't it? Well, yeah, it can be. Um, you can spend a lot of time and money and fuel looking around in, in these rivers, but there are certain types of structure where they live and certain types where they don't. And uh, being out in the water all the time, uh, you get to know the river pretty well. Yeah, I bet. Oh, oh, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. OK. Oh! <laughs> you got nice there, Oh, he's gone right around the boat. Let's see if I can stay connected to this one. He nearly jumped in the boat. I reckon you land about, what do you reckon, about one out of six of these things on hard-bodied lures. For sure. They don't stay connected real well. Good on no. fly. This bloke looks like he might actually stay on. Come on, mate. Settle down. They never stop fighting. Ah. <laughs> there we go. Lovely tarp and a rock eye herring. Well, that's a nice end to the day. I'll tell you what. What a fantastic day's fishing here in the fresh water, just 50 kilometres outside Cairns. Just goes to show there's another whole side of the fishing to Cairns. There's a lot more than the saltwater action out there on the reef. You can come out with a guide like Peter and enjoy action like this. Well, it's another whole dimension to the Cairns scene. Put him back in the water. Ah, oh, mate. What do you say we go home and have a cuppa? What a good idea. The Hinchinbrook Channel near Ingham in northern Queensland is home to one of Australia's largest mangrove systems. And in it live some weird and wonderful creatures, including some mighty big crocs. The Hinchinbrook Channel is a 300 square kilometre maze of saltwater creeks, mangrove flats and small mangrove islands. This amazing estuarine system is inhabited by dolphins, dugongs, hundreds of species of fish, crabs and other exotic marine life. Local charter fishing guide John Simmons from North Australian Sport Fishing knows the Hinchinbrook Channel like the back of his hand. These mangroves are a, an intricate part of the environment, John. They tell our viewers a little bit about them and how important they are, and those people that have destroyed them, how much we hate them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rex, you've got, um, you've got leaves falling off all the time. You can see floating around here. The high tides are bringing them out from inside. It's a food chain for all small fish. Isn't it? Yeah. Reminds me a lot of the northern part of Australia, particularly Bathurst Island. On the way down, I noticed it's not unlike Bathurst Island, but it just is home to so many creatures, isn't it? It is. You can hear that popping going on there, gases popping out. And, you know, when you get closer, those leaves, you see all the you know, little crabs and yeah. broom and tucked right up in underneath the mangroves there, you see all the smaller predators. So as the further you'll come away, you yeah. the predators move. And that actual clicking noise is mud crabs and different crabs no, and crustaceans? No, it's not mud crabs, it's just your uh, gases of the water coming off there. Is it? Yeah, mulch down process. Yeah. And lovely to see the oysters clinging hold of the mangrove roots, isn't it? Yeah. Gives it a different uh, different look. Oh, it gives the fish plenty of cover. That's the idea. We're going to maintain that the mangroves are going to be here forevermore. That's the most important thing. Just put it right up against that rock face there. <clears throat> and bring it down off the... Oh, <laughs> yes, John, he took it. <laughs> He's got it. Right. I don't know what it is. Certainly not a barra. 
He came up and took that as if there was no tomorrow. It's no humongous fish, but by gee, fought well early. What have we got here? He's, he's gone down deep. A little bit deep, Rex. It might be a blue salmon or something, is it? Or a caddy or something? What, what's, what sort of a, a cat catfish? Catfish. Yeah, Rex. Yeah. That's, um... Don't go messing with old catfish, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, a few nasty spines on that one. Yeah, oh, for sure, mate. I'll tell you what, I've been uh, there and done that. Been there and done that, the old caddy. Been there and done that with the old caddy, boys. Now, we just want to go through a couple of things for young players. There's the old whiskers for the catfish, but I'll just lift him in for our viewers at home and just point out that the real problem areas are here. Now that is real problem areas that can go into you. And also these blokes here, they're just like knife uh, points. So there, there and there with the catfish and there's also one that comes up there. So what I might do is just get the top hook out of him and it now barbs out of that so it should come out easy, which it has. And then it's a simple matter of popping him over the side. Don't touch him because for young players, this can be, yeah, mate, I know it's all right. And I'll just give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a shake. Yes, all right, I'm going to, he's saying there's Rex Hunt. Who's that bloke with him with the camera? Hey, and there he goes, the old catfish. So that's the beauty of the barbed hooks and that's the beauty of lure fishing, particularly here at Hinchinbrook. With North Australian sport fishing safaris, you never know what you're going to get. So it's time for me and John to have another cast. No doubt about it, you've got to get close to those snags. If you don't get close to them, mate, she's a yibbity yibbity job, isn't she? That's right, Rex, yeah. And something's had a go at it now, yes! Go on you, Rex. Yeah. I think a good little hint for our people at home sometimes to just... These fish up here in the northern Australian areas can have a bit of a bump. This is a cod, I think. Oh, what sort of a fish is that? Yeah, that's a cod, uh, cod. Yeah. These fish up here, they can actually come in and bump the lure. You know, John, and I think it's a fair sort of a thing to say to our people that just because they bump it doesn't mean that you can't stop it and start it again and they'll come again, you know? That's right, Rex, yeah. But, oh, these cod grow to immense proportions, but they're one of the pretty fish of the sea, aren't they? They sure are. Tell us a little bit about them. The estuary cod, I think. That's the estuary know. cod, yeah. yeah. More of the gold spot you can Pretty, get, uh, isn't he? get a few different colours of them yeah. here and in the channel. Look at the size of that mouth. Them. And they can swallow even things like little birds or mice, I believe. They're real predators, aren't they? Look, he's he's actually... Well, that, that's how he grabbed the lure in the end, you see, and he's just swallowed the whole lure. Yeah. And fortunately, with the barbless hooks, we can just grab the hooks like that out of his throat. And, and a couple of times in Bathurst Island last year, I actually had the cod grab hold of the lure without being connected to the hooks, and it's quite yes. amazing. So these fish will eat anything. A little bit like my boy Matthew. OK, well, that hook will just come right up there, and he'll go back in. And this is good fun. There's no doubt about it, John. But now, your clients, um, your clients must be happy to get a variety of fish. We're targeting barra, we're targeting blue salmon, we're targeting anything that might come in here. But I think with lure fishing, it's important to catch some fish, and we're certainly doing that today. Oh, that's right, Rex, yeah. You're on a nice little bit of uh, rocky country here. Yeah. Uh, falls off, and uh, you've got bait moving around. Yeah, I exactly. One of the biggest things, you've got to have that bit of bait. And... Yeah. So I think as, as John pans along that rock, rock bar, and also the mangrove jack, uh, the mangrove jacks, the mangroves, it's important to realise that fish require cover and food. And this rock bar, and also the mangroves that go into the rocks, creates a perfect environment, both cover for the fish and food for the fish. And that's, we're like human beings. You have a roof over your head and something in your tummy, and there's not much more to life, is there? Well, folks, it's yibbity yibbity on Cairns for another year. But next week, we go to Victoria's Western Port in the hunt for the local elephant fish. Folks, no pun intended. We'll see you somewhere during the week in the wonderful world of fishing. Goodbye for now. We've got a long way to go, mate. We're in a hundred foot of water. <laughs> Look at that. Magnificent. The old Shimano Junior outfit. Come on, Rexy boy, keep it going. Pump iron and be a macho man.
<laughs> back up, Bernie! Back up, Bernie! <laughs> Get the gap! Good on you, Mel. Hope you're watching this, son. This could have been you. Tommy Hanlon, it could be you. Now, we're not far away now because I can feel him kicking. Kicking, 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 as Con the Fruit Drill would say. Oh, gee whiz. Here he comes, flash of colour. A flash of colour? Oh, look at him. That's, now, that's not a bad fish. Oh, that is not a bad...